Well, I guess we'll get we'll get cracking. Um, yeah, thanks everyone for coming to another ACF Chat Fridays. We are doing this on a uh, every two week basis. We're recording the sessions. The sessions will go onto the um, WP Engine Builders YouTube channel. And we normally do a blog post about it as well, so people can catch up if they don't come, which is fine. Uh, I'm Ian Paulson, the product manager for ACF. We've got the team, uh, some of the team here today. We've got Liam Gladdy, Matt Shaw, both the engineers on the plugin. We've got Damon Cook, who's just popped on. He's our DevRel guy, which is great. We normally have Michael, content person as well. Uh, oh, there's Anthony Bachel. He's also on the team. So yeah, thanks for coming along. I think not a huge amount of extra stuff to chat about today, like the Q&A feature in Zoom, which is open. It's at the bottom, uh, a couple of buttons to the right of the share screen button. So please feel free to ask any questions in there. The team will either answer um, openly or we'll, we'll write an answer in there. We can use the chat as well if you don't see the Q&A. Um, it's quite a small amount of people as well. So if you do ask a question, feel free to unmute if you've got follow up thoughts or wanted to do a bit more discussion. Probably the main thing to call out is we have got uh, our ACF annual survey open at the moment. I've just popped a link to that in the chat. Um, I think I mentioned it last time. It's the first ever survey that we've done and it's the start of doing this annually. So we will, we, we've got this um, 10, five to 10 minute worth of survey questions that will help us understand how everybody's using ACF, how they're building Word, WordPress sites with ACF. Um, there's a load of general other questions in there just to help us sort of understand your usage um, and what you'll perhaps need from us in the future. So it's a, it's a good chance to help uh, us you know, guide the product development, understand where people are using it um, and just leave some general feedback, which is great. So if you haven't already taken it, or if you have already taken it, thank you. If you haven't already, go ahead. We've got it open till Friday next week, so the 19th. Um, it's anonymous. You don't need to necessarily leave emails or anything. And we will be publishing results, kind of like aggregated and anonymized results uh, sometime after the survey closes. So it'll be kind of nice to see um, like a slice of, of the WordPress developer um, or WordPress ecosystem just to see um, how how people are using WordPress. Is it a big focus on blocks now or page builders? Something that you know is on our mind at the moment because ACF is used by so many different people using so many different ways to build WordPress sites. So it's quite it's great for our point of view. So we'd appreciate you helping us out, but obviously get your voice heard as well. Um, I think that was about it. Oh, Damon, as a let's not do this at the end. Let's do this now. Do you want to, should we, has anyone got a link to Damon and Liam's session next week? We can put in the chat and just talk a little bit about that. I really should have that link, shouldn't I? Yeah, I know. I was just, where, where is that link? Damn it. I can grab it. I'll oh, nice. drop it in the chat. Yeah, it's going to be on Tuesday afternoon. It's 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, and we're going to build a testimonial block. Um, and just kind of go through some of the updated steps to get there. Um, and some twists along the way, we'll probably explore some like inner blocks usage and other um, little ad little advanced, I guess, or <laughs> extended techniques to work with ACF blocks. So that'll be 1 p.m. on Eastern. Um, and I'll drop the link in the chat. Just one. Oh, looks like Liam already beat me to it. Thanks, Ian. Yeah, so hopefully that will be kind of the start of a more regular session um, where we're doing these kind of demos of building things. And obviously the first one is focusing on building ACF, an ACF block. Um, we'll probably do some more, maybe some more advanced ACF block um, to sessions. But like if you, I had an email from, from somebody saying, oh, it looks good, but I build with a page builder, like, maybe we should do something like that. So, you know, leave us in the chat if you'd rather see sessions on something that's more aligned with your workflow, let us know. Um, yeah, thanks, Damon. Thanks, Liam. That's going to be great. Looking forward to that next week. Let's have a look. Has anybody put anything in the chat or in the Q&A? Have we got any questions? And in the absence of anything there, feel free to unmute and ask away.
oh actually while i'm here if you don't haven't already seen that we released acf uh 6.1.6 .6 last week it is a security fix release so please um you know do do the necessary and update all your sites and i appreciate that's not always a, an easy task depending on how many sites you've got and a bit of testing but yeah the 616 release that i've just dropped in the chat is quite an important security fix we've backported it as well for anyone who's still on acf5 version so it's um, available in acf5.12.6 which you can get from uh, wordpress.org which the instructions are on on that doc on that blog post but you can get it from wordpress.org and you can get it from your account as well for the pro versions so that is yeah a big rotating light emoji that is something you should do um we kind of yeah it's it's a tr it's a tricky one because security you know the plugin's big the plugin's old these things happen um but we were told about it or it was discovered a couple of days before we shipped the version so we're trying to trying to get on top of it and and try and mitigate any issues there brian go for it hey i uh, just had a quick question and i, I might have brought this up before but um ACF blocks have been great, um, and I've loved just having that flexibility and being able to like build little components and build little pieces um, and using it with the block editor and figuring out how to how to you know uh, create interesting content. But the one thing I haven't been able to do is figure out how to uh, do a flexible content um, module inside of a block, like create a custom block that is a ACF um, flexible content module where I can like I'm trying to like scaffold it with a CSS grid and be able to drop you know create rows that drop uh, you know different um, um, images or text things or fields that I set up uh, in ACF usually in the back end I can do this with Beaver Builder really easily with the short code but I haven't been able to like propagate um, a custom ACF block with flexible content just wondering if that's if there's any issues with that or if my approach is just bad um a couple of things before i know liam you're going to dive into the block stuff uh, you mentioned beaver builder i don't know if you'd seen that beaver builder recently released a really nice integration with acf with acf blocks so you can use acf blocks in your beaver builder builds you know i did i did see something about that and uh with the new uh 6.2 and the block editor i'm trying to like move away from beaver builder and do it gotcha. custom so yeah um, you know, it's that 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 might handicap me and make me go fully back to be rebuilt. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to try to embrace um, you know the block editor if I can. Yeah. Okay. So with the the flexible content field and the block editor in WordPress, I think we we see the the flexible content field being a different way to build in the classic WordPress, whereas you can actually do what the flexible content field if you're building layouts and and allowing clients to kind of move stuff around you can do that with blocks without the flexible content field is, is, right. is that how you understand it liam as well yeah basically and i i get that our documentation needs some work here and we'll, we'll I, i'll chat today and then we'll get a tutorial thing set up and get you a recording so that we can actually show this better but with if you have an acf block and you put in the blocks in it then you can specify what type of blocks you're allowed to put in there so if you think that essentially each of your flexible content layouts should be a standalone acf block you could say that the inner blocks of your parent block can only be you know your layouts essentially and then they can pick however many of those they want they can drag them and move them around and all that kind of stuff they can't put any other blocks in there they can't you know hmm. put headers in or you know i know what clients are like videos make the logo bigger yeah they can't do any of that they're still restricted to it essentially what the flexible content field gives you but uh yeah in the in the kind of blocks world that's the way to think of it and i think that's on us i don't think we've done a particularly good job of kind of it's essentially telling folks hey you're using flexible content in the classic editor that's cool here's how you should do it in blocks so. okay so you treat them as inner blocks then which i need to look into and figure all that out but yeah so basically have a flexible content your sort of parent block um and then use allow allowed blocks which is a you know it's, it's a wordpress standard essentially on in, on inner blocks that lists the things that are allowed to go inside of it okay okay because ultimately what i wanted to do was you know i've, I've built it out in a way that 
um, you know, it's one CSS grid and then per row. So for the flexible content, you know, field, the different layouts, you know, one is like, you know, basically it's um, two grid wide by men. The next image is four grid wide. And so it's different like layouts that I'm allowing them to populate in there. So, so I can still build that scaffold. I just have to use inner block instead of trying to have it addressed straight through the flexible yeah, content. Yeah, I think, I think it would work exactly the same way, right? Because the, you're still... Your parent block can do whatever outer wrappers you need. Okay. And then each of the inner blocks will have its own template that is, you know, the specific, the grid columns or whatever else like that. Um, and okay. you could, you can, if you know, if you want to break it down even more, you could say, oh, let's allow the WordPress columns block inside there as well. And then you can use the WordPress columns to physically, you know, put them to two layouts side by side. So you, you get significantly more flexibility if you want it. Um, but then, yeah, it's up to you on, on, you know, kind of how far you want to lock it down to, to look like how you want it to look. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. I'll, I'll take a look at that. No worries. And I will, uh, I will ask Mike to, to, uh, I'll just probably write this doc. Cause I think that's actually a good one, right? I'll, <laughs> it, I'll, I'll do a flexible content <laughs> layout and then convert it into a block and yeah, I'll try and get okay, that me go. soon. Cause yeah, clearly that's a, a good thing for us to do. Nice. Thanks, Brian. Oliver, sure. what's, what's your question? Hi. So this, you might not be the right team to ask for this, but I'm going to throw it out here anyway, because it's something I've been struggling with for a while. Uh, I almost exclusively build everything with ACF blocks. I love it. Um, I've created this componentized system, uh, which uh, breaks everything down into smaller chunks. But since block JSON came out, I've been using it again pretty much exclusively. However, I'm finding that I'm really struggling understanding how to build block JSON using multiple blocks in, in, in a theme, because it seems almost like WordPress doesn't want you to do this. They want you to do one block per, per thing and then have something called child blocks, which I have found almost no documentation on at all. So Essentially, just to give you some summary here, I use SAS inside all my blocks. So um, I know that you can use WP scripts to do this. And, uh, but the documentation on it is so sparse um, and it doesn't ever touch on how to do it alongside or inside an ACF block.json. So uh, like I, sometimes we can get it to work and sometimes it's just a huge struggle. And I'm wondering if there's maybe a gap there with uh, some... Uh, demos with on the ACF Pro documentation site to show people if you're using SAS and you want to build a group of blocks, here's how you would do some entry points using WP scripts or something along those lines. So I guess it's maybe less of a question and more of a request. Anyway, thanks for uh, hearing me out. No, no, that's all good. Are you using tooling in your theme anyway? Do you have Webpack or something like that. To, to yeah, we use fast. Webpack generally. Yeah. Uh, we have our own Webpack config, which isn't great because, I mean, WP Scripts is probably the easiest way to tackle something like this. But again, it almost seems like they don't want you to really. Uh, they kind of not multiple blocks anyway. If it's one block at a time, single entry point, it's fine. Like it just builds it. But as soon as you have to loop through multiple entry points and like through multiple blocks, it kind of falls down. And I think it's maybe the the SAS compiling and minifying and all that jazz that's that's really causing the issues here. Um, because if it was we were just writing in CSS, that would be fine. But who does that? So yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's fair. The SAS part of this is actually not the bit that concerns me. It's the, the JavaScript bit that I feel like has potential to be more more complicated because the SAS bit it, it should just be like any other SAS file in your, in your folder, right? If you've got right. If you, if you add your blocks there to the part to the entry points essentially um and double asterisk slash asterisk dot css yeah, to yeah, basically yeah. load every single block thing and get that outputting to the same path right so you're essentially just compiling each to a separate css file inside this yeah you know, assuming yeah. each block is in its own folder that's the easiest way of doing it you, you can do it other ways but it, yeah i i would definitely recommend that then um then you get the CSS just outputted and then you can include it as you would in a block.json. Right. You, you're definitely right though. Like you couldn't even build a supported 
blocking it inside a theme until 6.1, I think that was introduced on the Damon or, or Anthony can correct me on that. Pretty sure that's when they introduced supporting blocks in themes. So it's still a relatively new thing because, you yeah, know, they just assumed everyone would do it in plugins. Um, right. Yeah. And that's obviously not how agencies work. So it, it's, it's still new. I think it's viable to, to get that working. Okay. The whole needing the, um, what it's called now dot you know the, the php uh, asset.php essentially for each js file to specify the versions and things like that that is the bit the wp scripts obviously does really well because it's built for that and you'd have to kind of try and replicate that in your own webpack configuration okay i don't but, know if we've ever used that and maybe well, exactly right so if you're not using specific javascripts for each block then this might not be an issue at all but so, we want uh, to be able to well yeah okay cool <laughs> I think, yeah, I think that's a, it's an interesting one. Like I need to go away and play with it, I think, and just see, see how to, to build it. If you've, um, if you've got like a demo theme with a couple of blocks in that you can throw over, feel free to send that over to us. Even sure. if you want to send it to support, I'll happily be away. I'm not at sure if our pack. repo is public yet. Uh, it, we're an agency, so, um, we do a lot of, you know, we're trying to build that exact model though, we'll have a starter theme where. We have a whole bunch of scaffolded basic blocks that we build on top of in order to build, customize it for any given client or given project. Um, and so we don't want to start from scratch every single time. And this is yeah, what exactly. we're trying to make sure that we have as smooth as possible. And just that, just building all these blocks uh, using custom scripts and all that sort of stuff is really where we're, we're struggling. I think we we have had it working, but it isn't it isn't straightforward. And then the documentation is just so non-existent that we're ending up just troubleshooting by shotgun method, and it's kind of crap. Yeah, yeah, no, I I, I can sympathize on that. When we were building Box V two and the block addition support, it was we basically you basically have to reverse engineer Gutenberg's code, right, to 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 figure out exactly what's happening and make it work along the way. So, so true. yeah, no, I get it. We can um, so much. yeah, we'll uh, we'll. We'll go ahead and, and take a look and see if we can kind of propose a, a webpack config that is sensible Great. there. Thank um, you. Because yeah, as I said, your approach is definitely not uncommon as a lot of agencies are going down that route of kind of, hey, we can just put a block library here and it means we can get a lot of reuse out of it. Obviously every every site can look completely different, but if you've got those foundation components, then it just makes life easier, right? What did you say that WordPress is calling the child blocks? in WordPress 6.1 again, you so didn't the, call them child. That was, that was for, um, putting blocks in a theme that was in 6.1. I think you're talking about block variants, right? I, I, Damon might be able to answer more here, but I, I'm fairly sure that is essentially you have a variant of a block and it's, you know, a slightly different setup, essentially like a child block. Okay. I think, I, yeah, I know about variants and, and block styles and things like that, but, um, Anyway, uh, I could have my terminology incorrect. So thank you so much. Appreciate it. Cool. No worries. Yeah. Um, yeah. Drop me an email if you want, and we can carry on the conversation and, and hopefully get some documentation and some code we can make public here. Will do. Okay, cool. Damon says you can have gel blocks. I will look more into that as well. Yeah, that's something not. I just thought it was just inner blocks and that was why it was blocks inside which I were children, but that's a whole other thing, parent and child and style variations. Okay. I need to do some leveling up. Yeah. Cool. Uh, you can just drop us an email to support advancedcustomdeals.com and for attention of any of us and it will get assigned to us. So. That sounds good. I, I'm already trying to find it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. There is. Yo, Brian, go for it. Um, I haven't looked this up, but while I got y'all here, um, now that ACF uh, ACF um, has custom post type registration, um, if if I've already have some sites that are all registered up with custom post post types UI, and I just want to like get rid of some plugins and and whatnot, can I migrate those registrations over, or and if so, how does that work? Yeah, just go to the any ACF admin any ACF admin page, Matt, or is it only the custom post types page? Yeah, it should be any. ACF okay. page. 
in the ASF admin page, you'll get a prompt at the top that says, hey, you've got CPTUI installed. Do you want to import everything? And you oh, really? I haven't seen that. Yeah. yeah. So long as it's save, active and enabled. Yeah. Yeah. If it's not, but it, it, we think that works. Okay. Okay. Well, that, that's easy enough. <laughs> yeah. And then you can just disable CPTUI oh, once, you, once you've imported everything. Yeah. That's the wrong link. I think just sent. Where is the. Yeah. Yeah. We've got. I was just trying to find the doc link to importing from CPTUI because there's a. We have updated that in the docs. Oh, cool. Nice. Is the QA gone? Anything in QA? Yeah, I quite like it. The format of raising hands and chatting because it's such a small group, then it's good to it's good to do that and actually talk to people rather than just ha having it all in text. I realized that as I was typing that in. <laughs> I guess oh, yeah, sorry. I could have just said it a lot easier. Um I haven't tried the styles and the variations options or properties in block JSON yet. And does that surface in ACF when you're creating a block using block JSON as well? So, so block styles are essentially, uh, think of it as it, we'll, we'll pass that through to the template. You can access it through block, you know, the block okay. variable. You can use it for, you know, if you want to have like a fixed set of themes, that's how I've done it in all my demos, you know, like a red background green background and, and it kind of gives you a preview of each one and okay. then you just click that and then it changes it's, essentially it's, in my demos i've never used it to apply a class essentially that varies what css gets applied okay but variations is the uh is more of a dark art to me but we'll figure out <laughs> right we usually just use an option and then it adds a class to something or it changes or it has a conditional using a field and it just gives it that way. But having an actual variation of a block, you could just have three different blocks that are essentially nested like a side-by-side -side block or something like that with different uh, components in each one that would be useful. So what you're saying is that they would, like if I use those variants, it would actually function inside Gutenberg on an ACF block? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Gotcha. Okay. And you can also use... You can also use patterns as well, which is a, a another oh, thing. Gosh. Yeah. Um, and that is a kind of a pattern is a set of blocks. I think it's the easiest way of describing it. I always worry about this kind of thing because this Damon's going to yell at me if I say it wrong. But it, it's that's that's how I essentially I see it. Um, there's a, a WP Engine launched a thing called Pattern Manager as well, which lets you easily view and, and edit these in in the WordPress admin itself. So, you, you know, if you want to set up a WordPress columns, two columns with two ACF blocks inside, then you can just easily let users click that on the front end to, to get the output. Gotcha. Hold on, it's got the link to the pattern manager. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it sounds like you and Damon have got your work cut out for you to get all of that in <laughs> and to do the extra bits and to like, we've definitely got some good, uh, session fodder for future ones and tutorials because obviously we we should be calling this stuff out how to do it and how to do it in the block templates exactly. and everything yeah uh, we me mike and damon have been working uh we have a, a big jury ticket right now with a whole bunch of suggestions for for block documentation and tutorials so uh, yeah well we can add it to that <clears throat> yeah don't don't worry i've been making furious notes the whole time <laughs> yeah. which is to say making them at you know, high speed rather than angry notes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> fracking, Dang. fracking. Dang, blocks again. Oh, yeah. Has anyone, anyone got anything else or any um, pain points they've got on their site builds that maybe aren't block related? Like, we're it, obviously here to support everything, but yeah, just wanted to open it up a bit more. Mm. Well, how about um, uh, integrations like um, with Airtable? Um, I've been pretty successful with um, using ACF and WP All Import, pulling info in from uh, pretty complicated um, Google Sheets. Um, but as far as any Airtable integrations, I know this has mostly ha happened or done through like Zapier or like you know some of those other automation tools. But um, just wondered if you all knew of any good sources for getting Airtable data into your ACF fields. 
Yeah, I don't think there's anything at the moment. We have we have talked about kind of external data sources and it has been requested a few times. Are you, with your Google Sheets work, are you looking to get it into sort of a repeater field or what? what's the typical way of getting that data in? Um, it basically like with um, WP all in, import is the interface and because Google Sheets allows you to like um, publish to the web, um, and it updates automatically whenever any new in info is entered. Um, and basically, um, with WPL import, you know, I just put in that URL from the Google, um, um, you know, you know, hosted sheet. And then when I pull that in, it automatically populates. There's an ACF um, add-on to WPL import that allows me to like uh, map out the the Google Sheet to the ACF fields, but there's nothing similar like that that I've been able to find for Airtable, which for certain reasons um, I'd, I'd like to use instead. Uh, yeah. But I just haven't found any good tools that that do the same thing. It's just, you know, ACF, I mean, um, Google Sheets is so, it's so uh, data entry like, whereas Airtable is so visual. And it's, it, this is for a restaurant client to, put in menu and all the menu items and descriptions and prices and everything like that be much easier to use Airtable and pull it all into the ACF in the back end. Yeah. So two things there. So with the Google Sheets, presumably when you're mapping it with the all import ACF add-on, are you mapping it to repeater fields? So you've still got that tabular kind of uh, approach. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm mapping it to like just individual fields. I do have repeater fields built in and I believe it does have that capacity totally to, to map it out to repeaters. I don't know that I've, since I've, ad I've added repeater fields um, recently to, to those menu items. So I haven't tested that, but. Yeah. Um, so, but, uh, but you, are you sort of specifying cells in this Google sheet to, pull in to specific exactly, data yeah. field right okay gotcha yeah, yeah this is the price field this is the add-on field this is the description field yeah um and, and then with the question around Airtable and and the, the better way to to get that data input in a in an external system but then obviously get that data into ACF would would you see more value to us having a better data input way of doing things rather than like because at the moment if, you, if you're thinking tabular like sheet data the repeater mm -hmm. the repeater is the closest thing we've got but mm -hmm. it's not it's not great and it's not it's not um it's not excel like it's not a table really you have to kind mm -hmm. of the ui is a little bit different and the ux is different um it i'm just trying to get to understand are you using Airtable just because that's the better way of doing it and actually if we had something that was a, a better sort of data entry Mm. um approach would that solve the need you know that's possible um it, it is hard yeah i mean if if people could go directly into the custom post type and just start adding and whatnot you know Airtable is just so visually appealing the way that they've organized all that that and and you can throw stuff around um so in that sense, yeah, it was potentially a little bit more user friendly the way I've got it set up. And I think since the new the new um, iteration of ACF, it is a lot more visually um, engaging and and I think clearer to to a to a client who's unfamiliar with it to be able to like to use it. Um, so I just wish I had a, the ability maybe to uh, refine the look a little bit or customize it. I don't know if that's possible. If I was, uh, I'm I'm a designer, not a developer. So um, as far as the coding stuff goes, um, you know, I pick around with CSS and and whatnot, but wouldn't be able to get really under the hood and 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 refine things a whole lot. Um, yeah. But yeah, That's if if the interface was a little bit more like that, I, potentially I could see that being a more yeah. direct route. Yeah, and Shane, you're saying similar. If there was a tabular data format, we could phase out table press. And yeah, there's something we're, we're, we're thinking about, not necessarily in the short term, but yeah, we understand that that seems to be quite a, a need for getting tabular data in. Yeah, a question for you there, Shane. Is that more on the admin interface of, of entering, or do you use table presses, you know, just output this table and let me search it as well on the front end yeah yeah do you have the front end component as well or is it just the back end you're more interested in it uh, it's a bit of both like we we use it a lot for just making a design rather than doing a bunch of for loops 
for a repeater. Yeah, I get it. So it's just simplifying both entering and displaying. Okay. Well, that's good yeah. info for the conversations we're having about you know, what we could do to make that better. Yeah. Yeah, because I think that's that's the thing with ACF has always been front end agnostic. Like we just the data, you can define what data it is. Your content editors add the values to that data in, in WordPress's back end. And then the developer or whoever goes and takes that data and displays it in the theme or you know the front end. But ACF doesn't have any part of that apart from giving you the functions to get the data. Um, but other tools are a bit more opinionated and have like the view level feature that can sort of output this data as a table in the front end and that kind of thing. But it's just interesting to hear more from more people saying, or oh, maybe we we would use that if ACF had it. Like, I'm not to say we would to do it, but it's good to sort of understand how people are using the data and would it make their lives easier. I mean, yeah, at the very least, right? That's a good demo block essentially, right? If you've got ACF letting you do the back end, and there's a nice, easy, table easy block. drop in essentially ACF block that is the table output for the other end, then that kind of covers that off as well, right? Without us needing to basically yeah. add a whole bunch of UI elements, the front end output to the plugin. Yeah. Security. Um, I guess whilst there's a bit of silence. Damon, your last comment on the um, Oliver's message about maybe we'd get might get that into Tuesday's workshop. I guess is there anything else we'd we'd want to hear from people about the things that they would like for block workshops? Like, what what else can we sort of add on the roster? Yeah, I, I just know that we're going to, um, Liam, we wanted to touch on inner blocks. Um, and I, I think we might be able to get to some block styles maybe in the workshop. And then beyond that, I'm not sure what, I mean, we can look to explore other things. It might be get pushed into the next workshop, but um, yeah. we're just trying to limit to about, you know, 45 minutes and then some space for Q&A. So. We don't want to cover too much crown and overwhelm everybody. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, Eric, you might not have been in when we posted the link. Where's that link again? I can't copy and paste it, can I? Got it. I think. Yeah, no worries. Um, it's probably a good chance to say if you haven't filled out a survey fill out again here's the link or not fill out again because that would be skewing results i mean <laughs> if you haven't filled it out fill out again if you haven't seen the link um well i mean if if no one else has got any burning questions we're happy to wrap up early give everyone some time um we'll obviously be here in the next couple of weeks i think Yeah, we'll be doing it on the 26th. I think we aren't doing it on the 9th of June because we've got some time off, I think, from the team. Uh, so, WordCamp Europe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll, <laughs> some of the team will be at WordCamp Europe. Anyone else going to WordCamp Europe? No. Nope. Is anyone going to WordCamp US at all? Or Hopefully. We're, we're yeah. still figuring that out. Um, I, I I grabbed a ticket anyway. Um, obviously in the UK it's a little bit logistically harder for me to get over there, but I'm just, I'm hoping to go. It's hard to get a ticket too, actually. Uh, yeah, true. I that's why I grabbed one because it was the same last year. Um, yeah. 
but there's Actually, another round of tickets going on sale. If taking tickets, Liam. Like yeah, exactly. I'm the problem. Just mix it up. <laughs> I think there's another round of tickets going on sale, like today or in the next couple of days. Monday. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Anthony. Someone pays attention. I was just here chilling with my 400 tickets that I reserved in case I was in friends. Like... <laughs> Selling them on the black market. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, hopefully we can get some people out to work out. Yes, for sure. Alrighty, well, yeah, let's let's wrap it up now, and we will see you in a couple of weeks. Um, yeah, thanks for coming, everyone. Have a good rest of your yeah. day. Thanks. Talk to you soon.